Yeah, I think it just hits you a bit harder. What do we got? It's not bad though, is it? No, that's very... Very Coopers. You've got to be happy with that. That was the goal. What number? 12B. I know this time. I did my... Uh, 12B. Five seconds of research beforehand. Which is... Australian sparkling? Australian sparkling ale. Is there an Australian ale or purely Australian sparkling? Uh, only in, So in BJCP it is Australian sparkling ale, but then there's like... What's the ones that's not BJCP? The American one? Oh, Brewers Association. Yeah, they have a few Australian styles in there. Okay. So I think like some comps, when they do have like Australian beers, they'll let you go into those Australian categories. But I think this is the only one in BJCP, which is bang on. It's, ve Australian. it's very, it, mate, this is like, or what, this is a sparkling. This is a, mm. this is a Cooper's Red Lid Sparkling Ale. Yeah, so I only cracked it the other day and I didn't have any sparkling ale on hand to actually see how close it was. I'll probably be disappointed if I do do that, but I don't know, like, you drink and you think, oh yeah, that's, that'll pass for a Cooper's. On the nose, don't you think? on the appearance. Um, what, so what, what is a sparkling ale? So, I'm glad you asked. If only I had more research time. This is uh, smooth and balanced. All components merged together with similar intensities. Moderate flavors showcasing Australian ingredients. Uh, large flavor dimension, very drinkable, suitable to hot climate, relies on its yeast character. So that's that's the what yeast BJCP says. Yeah, yeah, straight away. <clears throat> this is what I said to you before we started filming about like the balance. I think maybe it is a little hop heavy. Even though it does kind of in bitterness, trickle off of it, but not yeah. in, not in flavor. a flavor. Mm. That's just like straight up bitter, isn't it? But like bitter, bitter straight away, but dissipates really quickly. Mm. Which is, you know, not always a bad thing. It's like beer that your grandpa used to give you more yeah. than, you know. <laughs> but... The, the colour, appearance, aroma, before you take a sip, you, you'd you confuse that with any, any Coopers. Mm. Yeah, so this is keg conditioned as well, my first crack at doing that. So that's, and I didn't, uh, didn't cold crash, none of that, just put it straight from the fermenter, the thickest part into the keg, dumped my priming sugar, left that for about 10 days or so. The first one I poured off tap was all foam. So I had to like shake a little bit out, which kind of felt like I'd wasted a little bit of effort. But it, I think, yeah, once it kind of found a suitable point, I gave it like a little bit of a shake, like let it kind of kick all that yeast stuff off the bottom. Cause it's eventually gonna all settle down to the bottom again. Yeah. So you kind of want Hopefully to like, drink on top of it. Oh yeah, it'll be drunk long before that. But um, yeah, as soon as I poured it, I was like, oh, okay, that's perfect. Cause like when I did pour that real foamy one, it was like super clear at the bottom. And yep. I was like, oh. Cause I've been doing a lot of those clear beers of late. I really want to yeah, haze it up, make it a bit hazy. So we well, had the proteins in the, you know, in the yeah, yeah, fermenter so. and stuff. It looked pretty good, like that. Mm. So. It did say we want all Australian ingredients. So the yeast we pinched from the bottles. The hop was a uh, Super Pride, which is like a like you know trial batch of um, Pride of Ringwood, okay. but just higher alpha acid. Um, in terms of malt, it's all Cooper's Pale Malt, and I use 350 gram late edition of, oh no, sorry, I've got 350 of wheat and 250 of caramel as a late edition to give it a bit of color. But like- That really doesn't come through. No. But you did a late edition. Yeah, yeah so, so you so wouldn't get the caramel, just, but yeah. like, also when I was looking at the grain trucking it in, it wasn't like super dark either. So, I don't know. I guess if you had just a pale batch, it might, be a little bit lighter but cloudy and then the wheat gives it like a good amount of cloudiness man it looks like a cooper's mm. well, no one's no one's moaning about that uh abv ibu what are we looking at abv i reckon <clears throat> so this <clears throat> is 5.4 on the brewer's friend but the re like the thing i was reading about keg conditioning you like you do pick up a bit of extra alcohol from like the secondary ferment so they reckon about half a percent so what's that 5.9 yeah 5.9 abv ibu is 34 which i reckon must only just sneak into what the limit is for sparkling ale 
uh, the limit's 35, so we're like right at the cusp of bitterness. On bitterness, and that's probably so, true, especially from the sips that you get at the front. Like, mm. the bitterness doesn't, it's not like a IPA bitterness where it lingers. This literally just yeah. hits and then goes. Like, it's I think real like quick. in that time as well, like once it has kind of worn off, you get a little bit of that yeast flavor, but it kind of, it's like the drowned out tail end of the yeast flavor. So it's kind of, yeah. The balance we were talking about before, probably not perfect, but like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I think I don't think it's bad, mate. And this could, this oh, obviously, yeah. we're comparing this to a beer we were trying to, or we're going for a Cooper's Parlor or a Cooper's Sparkling Ale. Mm, that's right. Mate, that is a banging clone. Like, when this goes Pretty up good, on, hey? online, um, on our yeah. website, link below, um, th this is this is almost like clone, Cooper's yeah. clone. I'd be pretty happy with that if I was, you know, advertising to a friend that I have something that tastes like Cooper's for them. So the B to, according to BJCP, right? What what do what did we what do we want and did we get it? Right. So aroma. We want soft, clean aroma, a balanced mix of esters, hops, malt, and yeast. Tick tick. Um, all moderates are low intensity. That's on the nose. Uh, the esters are frequently pear and apple, possibly banana. Though I don't really get. No, it's that. On this. No, no. Um, hops are earthy, herbaceous. I would say, yeah. Herbaceous is probably how I describe Pride of Ringwood. <clears throat> and malt is neutral, grainy to moderately sweet white bread. I was so, going to say there was some uh, the smallest bit of sweetness on this, yeah. but it was the Cooper's sweet. Mm. Not not like not like uh, caramel sugary, or yeah. sugar. It's that you know. I've got to say as well, sweet. this Cooper's yeast plows through it. This finished at like. 2005, wow. 2006 or something, which is what, you know, kind of it was what I was reading was going to okay. say was going to happen. I think the style guideline <clears throat> say it needs to finish pretty low as well, but yeah, it's it's weird to like associate all of those flavours and still have like a really dry sort of beer. It is dry as well, as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, so. Did you save the yeast as well? Um, Harvest yeah, and I gave it to Luke to make his, okay. um, awesome. his homebrew kit, so awesome. his extract kit. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe just keep trialing with this keg carbonation. I think like the bones of it is all right. I might go back to actual Pride of Ringwood hops as well instead of Super Pride. Maybe that's what's giving that alpha acid bitterness and maybe mask that the hop yeah, flavor a bit. Maybe, yeah. Um, so yeah, keg conditioning. I might go back to normal Pride of Ringwood. Um, shit, I was happy doing the yeast harvesting. Yeah, and that's that was it. Pretty much it. So it's got me excited now to try to do this yeast harvesting with other beers like. Especially like sours and other stuff like That'll that. That would be but interesting, yeah. Because yeah. Cooper's is, is known for like, you know, leaving the yeast in there, their bottle yeah. condition, keg condition, can condition. Absolutely. So yeah, no issues doing that again. We I might think. even do a video uh, on how to Yeah, do a harvest. mini cultivation. Yeah, harvest mm. some yeast and then put that in a new in a new new thing. Yeah, it's one of those things that I always felt too scared to do until I did the first one and I was like, Oh, okay. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. As long as you're clean, but like I guess even if you're not like super duper, it's probably not going to be awful, but... Right, homebrew challenge. This is my beer. I finally got round to ticking one of my own boxes. So this is the 120 beers, 40 beers each. Shit, I've made a few now that I have either drank too quick or they didn't come out right that I'm going to have to brew again. So it's actually good to get this one done, tick all the boxes, be happy with it. Perfect. Definitely make this again. They said it was good for hot climate, so summer's coming up. I'll probably sneak another one of these in because this will be a fan favorite. Because it's always good, like especially when you have people around and they're like, mm. they might not know their craft beers as much, but they they would know that. Coopers being in South Australia. So if I can at least say I've got something that you know it does taste like Coopers, I think that'll be a real uh, mate. I'm a stealing real this winner. recipe. And yeah, this is going to be on, on. So I have yeah. a few beers I want to keep on tap at all time, which is why I need to now have six yeah. taps. Yeah. Oh, I've got plenty. Like. 42 taps that yeah. I need to have for the beers that I want to always have, but um, but this would be this would be one that I would keep on tap always. Yeah, it's not going to go bad. It's yeah, there's no hop aroma to lose. Yeah, it's um pretty <laughs> safe, pretty reliable. I think like the actual brew itself is pretty fucking straightforward. So I would almost say if you're looking to get into doing your first all grain batch, have a crack at this one. Not like, a bad one. The bittering isn't too hard. It's like one hop addition, it's two or three malts. It's a pretty hearty sort of yeast like even if you want to sub in like a real neutral packet yeast it'll you know it won't be too far off the mark easy for med schedule as well that's it so yeah let's have another one oh, let's go. <laughs>